Greetings everyone, I'm Force Nature. This is Top Tier Tips, let's begin. In this session, we're gonna take a look at how to deal with Nico. It is no secret that Nico is strong in Dead or Alive 6. This is due to her combination of simplicity coupled with effectiveness. In general, what Nico wants to do to you is get in your face and try and pressure you either with jab strings or elbow strings. If she wants to try and stun you, then she'll use her 6K, her forward knee string. What makes this character so dangerous is she's so fast and so safe. Let's see, 9 frame jab, 11 frame elbow right here. So, I mean, if you're just if you're just blocker stuff, then she can keep up pressure with guard breaks. So, I mean, a lot of her kind of moves just end on like single digit negatives. So, basically, when she ends up getting in close in your face, especially if she's faster than you, then she's just basically going to be in complete control. Oh, and she has this. See right here. This is just a minus three on block. Look what happens when you get hit by it. Seventy-eight damage for a launcher on normal. Oh, and did I mention that this move is only minus three on block and punishes whiff holds really badly? And three P plus K is hold resistant because, well, why not? I'm looking to answer the simple question of how the hell do you deal with this? For starters, the first thing you want to do is not stay in her face and get the hell out. By maintaining your space and effectively social distancing Nico, what you end up doing is reducing her options against you. For instance, if you're hanging around, let's say, mid-range or like further out, long range, and what she's going to try and do is try and stuff something or whiff punish something with her 6xp, for instance. This right here is an elbow that ends up stunning you for plus 20. So that's going to be her primary tool around kind of mid-range. Alright, other moves that she might try and do is she might, if from like long range, her longest range move is pretty much 236p hold right here. Like this move goes tremendously far, like this goes over 3 meters, 3.14 meters, I mean that's, that's really far. But the thing about this move of course is that it's a mid punch that is highly telegraphed as charge. I mean if it ends up hidden or ends up getting blocked, you see right here, so if it gets blocked plus 10, and if this move ends up hitting you, and it has a close hit property, it can do a tremendous amount of damage, so it's it's a really dangerous move. So this is basically a move that you're looking out for. So it's a mid punch, it's highly telegraphed, so you can either try and sidestep it, or, although you have to kind of time it for the charge, so you might have to practice that, or you can just simply like try and hold it. I mean, the thing about this, this uh, chargeable move, you can't cancel it. All you can do is basically maybe release it early, and when you release it early, you get the... Well, you get the shorter version, which is the 16 frame version. Right here, it doesn't have nearly as much range, 2.05 uh, meters. So this move is pretty good in its own respect, like minus six on blocks. Still does good, still does good damage. So has the close hit property. But the thing is that this has a lot less range and it's, well, it's not advantage on block. And if you, if you end up canceling it early, then you'll all, you'll always end up getting that version. So it has to be fully held down in order to get that version. If the opponent fully holds it down, they're committed. So that's when you have to either like mid punch hold or sidestep. If Nico's not trying to smack you with 6 XP, then she's gonna be hovering around mid range, maybe inching her way up to like around the edge of mid to close range, and then she wants to smack you with 6 KK. All right, this move comes out. It's like 13 frame knee, and the second hit's a high. Second hit is a track and high. This move is really good for Nico. So this move, this is basically her go-to stunning mid move, so 6kk. If this move ends up getting blocked, leaves her at minus 6. I think it was even better earlier in earlier versions of Dead or Alive 6, but in this, I mean minus 6, that's really good for a move that even has another follow-up after that with this 6kkk. Like so, so it ends up stunning you, plus 18. So this is a good move for Nico. so essentially any time that you, for instance, end up blocking the whole string, please throw Punisher for that. So after this, see right here, she's in like a squat and stance, so you think basically gonna go for like a stand in throw or a crouch and throw like right away. The, the timing can be a little iffy, so you have to basically check it because you see she's in partially standing, partially crouching, um, partially squatting, so so you, you do have to try and like, while you're in the practice, finding like a throw timing for you that ends up working, it's at minus 13, so you can easily do like a forward throw or even try like a 10 for it or even try like a 10 frame throw to punish that, but you have to punish that string every time. And basically what you want to do is, if, if the Nico's doing that, then the only thing they're going to be doing is doing that. The second hit is a high and it's um, it, a, it it almost jails, like there's a very small window to try and hold the second hit. 
but but in general yeah this this move this string can be quite abusable so you do have to kind of like watch out when Nikos are doing it and maybe like trying like um trying like if stuff the string ho however you can so but just have to be like really careful about Nico trying to abuse that string and be careful that the second hit is also a jump in move if you're like gonna try and 2p under it that may not well that's not gonna work very well for you along with 6k cape the other move that Nico will try and stun you with is 6pp as you see right here on normal hit it does not stun and is negative on normal hit however on counter hit it stuns these are at plus 20. This is her counter hit stun. 6AK is her normal hit stun. So any time that she, like, let's say for instance she has a faster elbow than her opponent, her elbow is 11 frames. Let's say her opponent has a 12 frame elbow, 13 frame elbow, or even whatever the hell Bass's elbow speed is. So I mean, like, she's gonna use that to try and intercept you. Or if she ends up blocking a string that is not necessarily punishable, but leaves the opponent, like, negative or anything like that, then she's gonna try and use 6PP to try and get her offense started, either try and stun you, it's highly delayable. She wants that counter hit stun. All right, this string, let's see how it operates. It has six P, P, P. So you can have four, four, well, basically four mid punches, or you can do, let's see, six P, P, K. This right here is a track and ender. Both, all these enders are pretty much safe. Right here, minus six, minus six. However, if you're just blocking there, you're being really patient, which is generally a good rule of thumb. Anyway, she might try and do this. The fourth P can be charged for a plus nine guard break. You generally don't want to have to deal with that guard break. If you end up blocking this, then it, then that's good. It's your turn. All right. So the main thing about this string is that if you can hold the second hit on reaction, then you basically like nullify the mix-up. All you're worrying about is if you can end up doing this or this. I mean, a lot of times Nico may even just try and just Nico may even just try and just do this. Just get that stun. Just keep like trying to get that stun, and after that you can end up like launching the opponent. So, with this string, you do have to be like quite patient, but also try and pay attention to when she is likely to use the string, and then you can try and just like basically go for go for like your your mid punch hold. But again, if you can hold this second hit on reaction, then you don't have to worry about if she's going to go for the mid kick or if she's gonna like continue the string. A key thing is to pay attention to what ranges Nico ends up using the six P string or six K K in range. If you're in her, if you're in her face, then uh, unfortunately you have to deal with the other jab. 6p or 6k mix-up but from mid-range like she all right she might try and jab but as you see right here the jab doesn't have too much range this is just simply for intercepting approaches 6pp is both for intercepting approaches or to try and see if they can try and delay it to get a stun going 6k same thing but if you can end up staying out of 6k or 6k range then you then honestly i mean the last hit the last hit could be sidestepped if she ends up going the entire ends up going the entire weight string for instance but again like trying to, st to stay out of 6pp range or 6 a range and to avoid getting baited is a decent strategy to run if Nico wants to be a cheeky bastard then she might hit you with this this is 66h plus k this is a 30 frame jump in low that is really unsafe on block but yeah watch your ankles folks if you're in an unfortunate situation where you have to fight Nico in close range you're gonna have to deal with your buttons. Unless you're Kasumi, you can just deal with your buttons no problem, because she also has a 9 frame jab. But yeah, in close, you're gonna have to deal with this. This is a 9 frame jab. So let's see, what does Nico have? She has stuff like P, 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 oh god, every time I say that, it just sounds wrong. She has PK. This is if she wants frame advantage. She has plus, gets plus 7 from PK. She might do P, P, P. That gives her, uh, basically a bit of a stumble stun, like with. With plus nine, she could pretty much launch you with with whatever. So basically, you do not want to get lift stunned by that. So if she's just doing PP, so a lot of the stuff out of the jab strings are usually, well, high. She does have stuff like PP6, PP6P, which goes high, high, mid. If that move, that only leaves her at plus five. If that move gets blocked, leaves her at minus seven. So she's still safe or semi-safe, which means that you could try a neutral throw attempt which is breakable, but in general with the jabs, you have to try and get, get you with PPP or PK to try and get the, to get the plus seven. Might have alluded to earlier, if she goes all the way into the string, right there, it's minus six if you do PPPP, but the, the last hit can be charged. Right there, she's at plus nine, same as six PPP. So that's why I said earlier where Nico's 
Um, pressure can be a little annoying if you let things go. Because she can commonly end her strings with the guard breaks. Although that only applies to her her punches usually. Like her kick strings don't usually end in a guard break. The other move that you're going to be dealing close against Nico would be her 6pp. Alright, I mentioned it before but I can't emphasize it enough. She wants to stun you with this move. This move comes out in 11 frames. It stuns really well. So any, so you basically have to watch your frames and close. So basically just like safe poking, not attacking like from disadvantage or anything like that. As soon as you start attacking from disadvantage or anything like that, you're getting smacked by 6 PP. Then you're basically going to have to deal with a stunned mix-up. If you do unfortunately get stunned and it's DOA, it's going to happen. A uh, common extender will either be 3 P or 4 PP. Right there, so after any of these, it's a big stun, and the most dangerous launcher is the 3P plus K. You know what? While we're on the topic of 3P plus K, you probably know that this is the uncharged version, so it doesn't really do much if you don't do it outside of stun, for instance, where you can actually get a launch. But if you do it fully charged, again, always gives you a good launch. So as you can probably guess, this is basically arguably one of Nico's best moves. And this is basically her best launcher. The thing about this move is I also alluded to earlier that this launcher can be... Basically, it can't be held, but you get that sidestep. That actually can work to your advantage. What that means is that you have to learn a specific punishment against that moves. Let me show you something. What do we have here? This is a Limbo Stun. This is one of the most dangerous stuns in DOA. Let me show you why. Find your Limbo Stun move, please. It's either going to be 6P plus K or 6P for most characters. Let's take a look at some additional annoying moves from Nico. This right here is 4H plus K. So from around close to mid-range, like basically around here, she might try and hit you with 4H plus K. So this move has great range, comes out in 18 frames, so it's like pretty much impossible to react to. Leaves her at plus, well, plus 18 when it hits. If it gets blocked, leaves her at minus 11. However, it has a fall in 4 plus K, 2K. This low sweep right here, right here is her frame advantage sweep. If you do it out of 4 plus K, 2K, it ends up knocking down. So you don't really want to get hit by that. This low sweep here is what Nico uses when she wants frame advantage on this is a tracking low sweep when she wants frame advantage on normal hit. It's a, it's a low that obviously goes under high, so this low sweep is really good. She also has 1P, which is, this is just simply a go, just, I don't know, it's just some go-to panic tracking low. So anytime Nico doesn't know what button to press, if she's not mashing you with her jab, she's mashing you with 1P. This move is negative on normal hit, unlike 2 which was K, which is positive. So this move's sole purpose is just to either intercept stuff, so it's it's really good for beating out high, so... I mean, where 2P doesn't have enough reward, 1P is better. Along with 4 HSK, 2K, or 2 HSK. Because of Nico's fighting style Pencat slot, she really likes rolling around on the ground. She also has an interesting move, which is 3 HSK, K. This move honestly almost feels maybe slightly gimmicky. I mean, it's actually a pretty unsafe move. The thing that makes this move feel gimmicky is that she's rolling around on the ground, but this move is a mid. This, yes, this hits you in the gut. So you cannot beat that move by blocking low. So, whereas this move right here, 1H plus, or 1H plus K, 2H plus K, or 2H, or 4H plus K, 2, uh, 2K, these moves are all lows. But 3H plus K, K, this is double mid. You have to block this one standard. If you end up, if you do manage to block, all right, well, one hit or both hits, she leaves herself unsafe. So although, I mean, if she only does one, then it's risky to try and punish her because she can end up doing both hits. But you see, minus 15, so you can easily just go for like any throw punish after that. And of course, be careful of her break attacks, which are basically all linear high punches or mid punches. She actually has a lot of them, like people's K, six people's K, any of the chargeable ones, four people's K, but they're all either mid punches or high punches. And they could, well, technically be sidestep. The thing about spacing Nico out is that she, she might end up foolishly trying to use her brick attacks from like basically something other than close range when she's not at advantage. The most like I already probably already said it. The most common one, of course, is two three six P. 
So if he can get Nico to try and get impatient, she might end up trying to use 236P at range, or may obviously try and like run at you where you can just intercept her. Once you've turned Nico into an impatient little scientist girl, you've pretty much won the matchup. Unless your character crumples in close range. Oh, and Nico's throw for opening you up in close range is her 12 frame throw, her 236T. T. The throw can do this to you if you misuse holes. If you had trouble with any of the terminology used in this video, check out this video to help shed some light on the nature of fighting game notation. If you're interested in learning Nico as opposed to beating the crap out of her, then check out this video guide here. I would like to thank Smart Esports and Trollcoin for endorsing this video. And as always, if you like this video, smash that like button. If you didn't like this video, just hit the like button anyway, and don't forget to subscribe for more juicy fighting game content. I also would like to thank my premium top tier fighters for their continued support, which I do appreciate. If you'd like to become a premium top tier fighter yourself, click on the Patreon link down below. This is Force Nature signing off. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Top Tier Tips.